In this lesson, we're going to learn how to convert between customary units for linear measurement. Let's review. Hopefully you watched our previous video, Customary Units, where we discussed relative sizes of each of the four main units used in the customary system for linear measurement. The smallest unit, the inch, is about the size of a small paper clip. It is followed by the foot, which measures close to the long end of a pocket folder. The next larger size, the yard, is similar to the height of an average desk, but any fan of American football knows that yards play an important role in the game. And finally, to measure long distances, we have the mile. In order to convert between units, we also need to know how the units relate to each other. There are 12 inches in each foot and 3 feet in each yard. Since there are 12 inches in each foot and 3 feet in each yard, you would need 36 inches to make 1 yard. The largest jump in units falls between yards and miles. It takes 1,760 yards and a whopping 5,280 feet to make up 1 mile. Knowing these conversion units is only one part of the conversion process, and most of the time they are given to you. We need to know how to apply them. When converting measurement, we are going to be using either multiplication or division. We will start by converting from a larger unit to a smaller unit. In this first problem, we are going from miles to feet. We can see in our conversion chart that there are 5,280 feet in one mile. So I can, if I know that there are 5,280 feet in each mile and I have three miles, I can find out how many feet I have total by multiplying those. And if I multiply 5,280 by 3, I will get my answer of 15,840. Another way we can solve these problems is by creating proportional fractions. In our last problem, we are converting from yards to feet. I'm going to create a fraction using my conversion information. In one yard, there are three feet, giving me 1 over 3. I'm going to start my proportional fraction by filling in information that I know and putting a question mark for what I don't know. I know that I have 9 yards, so I'm going to put the 9 over here on top because I have yards on top on my first fraction. Then I will place a question mark for the feet, the part I don't know. Now I can solve for the question mark, making the fractions equivalent. In order to go from 1 to 9, I would multiply the 1 by 9. Since I need my fractions to be proportionally correct or equivalent, I would need to do the same thing to my bottom number that I did to my top number, which is multiply by 9. When I multiply 3 by 9, I get my new denominator and the answer to this problem, 27. There are 27 feet in 9 yards. Now it's time for you to try one on your own. Pause the video while you solve the problem and unpause it when you're ready to check your answer. Since there are 12 inches in each foot and there are 2 feet, I would multiply 2 times 12 to give me my answer of 24 inches. Now here we have a few problems where the math doesn't end quite as neat and tidy as the others. In these problems, we don't just have one unit, we have a couple, because let's face it, sometimes life is messy. Here we have 2 feet 6 inches, and we are converting it to just inches. The 6 inches matches our unit that we're trying to change this into, so we're going to put a hold on this for a minute, and we're going to come back to it and just convert the 2 feet. And if I have 2 feet and there are 12 inches in each foot, that means together I have 24 inches in those 2 feet. But I can't forget about these 6 inches that I have here, and I'm going to have to add those to the 24 inches that I got for my 2 feet, giving me a total of 30 inches. In this next problem, we're going from 9 yards 2 feet to just feet. Again, I'm going to put a hold on the 2 feet because they match our end unit, and I'm just going to convert the 9 yards. And if I have 9 yards and there are 3 feet in each yard, I'm going to end up with 27 feet. But now I have to add those 2 feet back in, and when I add 2 to the 27, I'm going to get my answer of 29 feet. And now it's time for you to solve the problem again, so pause the video while you solve the problem and then unpause it to check your answer. 
And as I saw this, I had seven yards and I needed to change that into feet. And since there are three feet in each yard, I multiplied seven times three, giving me 21. But then I had to add back in this one foot that I had left over here, giving me a grand total of 22 feet. For this problem, um, we're actually jumping from larger units to smaller units that are not right next to us. Now I may remember how many inches there was in a yard, but if I can't remember or um, I don't have access to that information, I don't want to talk myself out of being able to solve this problem. If I can get to a unit I am familiar with, then I can still solve this problem. So for example, here I have five yards. I may not remember how many inches are in a yard, but I might remember how many feet are in a yard. So if I figure out and change my five yards to feet by multiplying it by three, giving me 15 feet, I may remember or use my chart to identify that there are 12 inches in one foot. So then in order to solve this, I would just need to multiply 15 by 12, giving me my answer, 180 inches. Once again, it's your turn to solve a problem. So pause the video while you solve it and then unpause it to check your answer. So here I went from six yards to feet by multiplying six by three, giving me 18 feet. And then I can go from feet to inches by multiplying 18 feet by 12 and getting my answer of 216 inches. Now we're switching gears and going from smaller units to larger units. I can still use my proportional fractions to help me solve these problems. So for the first one, I'm looking at going from inches to feet. And I know that there are 12 inches in each foot. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna set up my prop fraction. I'm gonna have one foot equals 12 inches. And then I'm going to make my equivalent fraction. What information I have is I have 36 inches. So I'm gonna put that down here with the inches. And my question mark goes up here. So now in order to solve it, I'm going to change, I'm going to make these fractions equivalent and I'm gonna do so by looking at how I would get from 12 to 36. And I would get to from 12 to 36 by multiplying by three. So then I would have to do the exact same thing to my numerator and I would multiply one by three, giving me my new numerator of three, which also is the answer to my question. It, if I had 36 inches, I would have three feet. On this problem, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going from 24 feet two yards. Again, I'm going to set up a fraction. I'm going to put one yard, because that's my conversion rate, equals three feet. And then what I have goes on this side. So I have 24 feet, which is going to go down here with the feet. And then my question mark would go up top. Now I'm going to figure out how would I get from three to 24. And I would do that by multiplying three by eight. I have to do the same thing to the top to keep it equivalent and multiply one by eight, giving me my new numerator of eight, which also happens to be the answer. 24 feet equals eight yards. Again, it's time for you to do one on your own. Pause the video while you work and then unpause it to check your answer. Down here, I've created my fractions. So um, one yard equals three feet. And so if I'm going to from my three feet to 21 feet, I would need to multiply three by seven. And I'm going to need to do the same thing to my numerator, giving me um, one times seven. And my new numerator would be seven. So 21 feet equals seven yards. Here we are going from smaller units to larger units, but again, with a little bit of messiness involved. So I'm starting here with 40 inches and I'm going to feet. Notice that I have this little spot here for inches left over. So if I'm dividing, um, seeing how many feet I can get out of 40 inches, I would need to divide 40 inches 
by 12 because there are 12 inches in each foot. And I know from my math facts that I can get three groups of 12 out of 40 with a remainder of four. That means I will have three whole feet. And this 12 here was telling me how many inches were in a foot. So this four, this remainder is telling me how many inches I have left over. My answer would be three feet, four inches. On the bottom down here, I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm going from 32 feet to yards. So I would need to divide 32 divided by 3 because there are 3 feet in each yard. That's going to give me 10 with a remainder of 2. That means in 32 feet, I will have 10 yards that are complete and my remainder of two tells me how many feet I have left over. So my answer would be 10 feet, two yards. Here you go, one more time solving a problem on your own. Pause the video and unpause it to check your work. Again, going from feet to yards, I have 26 feet and I would need to divide it by three because I can get three feet in every yard. That would give me an answer of eight with a remainder of two. So my answer would be eight yards, two feet. I always should be going back and checking my work too. So if I wanted to check this, I would just take eight times three, giving me 24 feet, and then add back in that extra two feet again, giving me 26 feet. You always want to be checking your work, and especially as it gets more confusing, it's all the more important. For this last type of problem, you may come across where you actually have to break it down into multiple pieces. Here I have 50 inches, and I want to change it into the largest, um, I want to change it into yards. So if I don't remember, again, I can always figure out how many feet I can get out of these inches by taking 50 and dividing it by 12, or knowing my math facts, and I know I can get four groups of 12 out of 50 with a remainder of two. Now that tells me that I am getting four feet, two inches out of 50 inches. So my two inches is going right here. The four feet is the only thing that I would need to break down because I have to decide, can I get a yard out of four feet? And if I divide four feet by three, which is how many I would get, I would have one yard, one foot, and two inches left over. I can always check my work by changing it all back into inches. So if I have one yard times 36 inches, that's gonna give me 36 inches, and I have one foot, which gives me 12 inches, giving me 12 inches, and then I have my two inches left over, if I add them all together, I should get my original number, which was 50 inches. One more problem to try on your own. Pause the video and unpause it when you have your answer. Okay, so when I changed 90 inches into feet, I was able to get seven feet, six inches. So I can put the six inches over here. And then seven feet, if I, if I convert that into yards by dividing by three, I would get two yards with one foot left over, giving me two yards, one feet, six inches. Thank you for learning about converting customary units for linear measurement with us today. Next time we will be focusing on capacity.